Today we're testing the Wham Bam versus Creality 3D printer pop-up enclosures. Do they work and are they good for your printer? Warping and distortion can ruin otherwise nice 3D prints. PLA is generally pretty easy to print with, but can still warp under the right conditions or with certain geometries. Something like ABS or nylon is notoriously difficult to print with because of its change in size due to temperature. I've made a video on printing ABS on an open frame machine in the past, but here is a quick summary. Your printed object will be hot at the nozzle, warm at the bed, and cooling in between. The cool bits shrink and either pull the object off the bed or make it split at the layer lines, or in worst case, both. So what if we could raise ambient temperatures, reduce that temperature range across the print and therefore limit the shrinkage. For some printers with a cube frame, you can enclose the print area nicely and I've done this with my Ender 5 and I'll come back to how that works later on in this video. For a more common i3 style machine, you can put a plastic bag or a cardboard box over the top or you could use one of these pop-up enclosures. Today I'm testing enclosures from both Creality and Wham Bam to see their effect on printing as well as the printer. I'm happy with my testing methodology, but please know that there are a lot of variables here. Your type of filament, your brand, its age, its condition, the ambient temperature and humidity, and not to mention the actual 3D printer being used and any modifications. This means that results may vary and I can only judge what I have in front of me, so let's get into it. This is how we're gonna do it. We're gonna print a difficult piece in ABS as a baseline, We'll then add the enclosures over the top, but not add any extra heat besides which the 3D printer generates by itself. And then finally, we'll use a hairdryer to elevate the temperature to 50 degrees, turn it off and commence printing. And here are the details around we're gonna conduct these tests. Firstly, our item is this warp test from Tech Shop Gym. It's long with a small contact patch and a heavy bit on top, so it likes to contract upwards on the edges. We're printing with Zortrax ABS, with the same slicer settings for each printer. This filament's quite old and I find that it always warps on me. The two printers I've chosen are my modified Ender 3 and my Prusa i3 Mark III. They both have all metal hot ends and produce reliable results. For both printers, I'm using smooth PEI sheets and before every print, I'm cleaning them with IPA and paper towel. I'll be testing both the Creality and Wham Bam enclosures and I'll be measuring a range of temperatures using a little rig I set up. Firstly, a little thermometer just sitting randomly in the room. Secondly, a thermistor taped just near the heated bed off to the left. And thirdly, another thermistor poked inside the electronics enclosure. These last two are read by an old 3D printer mainboard with an LCD display plugged in. On to our baseline results, and as you might expect, there was some warping that occurred. Not enough, however, to dislodge the object and both prints completed successfully. The blue ABS was printed on the Mark III, and as you can see against the flat ruler, it peeled up on each edge slightly. On the underside, we can see these little arcs where it gradually peeled up in stages and lost adhesion from the bed. The end of 3's bed didn't grip quite as well, so we have significantly more pronounced peeling up on the corners. It too has the arcs on the underside, showing where the filament slowly detached throughout the print. In terms of temperatures, the probe just near the bed steadily rose and settled in the high 20s, and inside the electronics enclosure just nudged over 30, but overall both were quite stable throughout the print. The Mark III was quite similar, the only difference is there's no cooling fan in the electronics case, so the temperatures run a few degrees hotter than the Ender 3. Onto the hot boxes, and we'll start with the Creality item. It comes in two sizes, and the one in this video is a smaller one to suit the Ender 3 and Ender 5. It's priced at 89 US dollars, and is meant to be flame retardant, with a reflective coating on the inside to retain heat. Assembly is quite straightforward, and the box has eight plastic joiners, a series of metal pipes, as well as simple instructions. All you really need to do is take the joiners and plug in the pipes in the orientation as shown in the diagrams. It takes only one to two minutes to put together the frame, and the most difficult part is pulling the material over this frame. Once together, you can see it's a fairly simple object. The front of the printer is accessed by undoing the two zippers and folding it out of the way. We also have a side pocket and an opening at the rear right for accessing the printer, 
that can hold itself out of the way. On the front left hand corner we have a grommet for running through cables and on top of the printer we have another access port once again held closed with velcro and the ability to stay open. The Wham Bam Hot Box retails at 119 US dollars. Like the Creality Box it's made from flame retardant material and has insulation on the walls to retain heat. It does cost more but it has a few more features. It collapses down for easier storage and it has a choice of eight metal lined filament passages to suit filament feeding for various printers. Probably the main advantage is the built in thermometer and the promise of future upgrades and add ons. There's already a few add ons on Thingiverse and there's also a playlist from Wham Bam giving some tips for getting the best out of this system. The Wham Bam product is different in that it's already assembled and just needs unfolding to put it together. Once you've got some corner pieces in place, you simply do up the zippers to make the structure rigid. The front flap is clear and is held shut with Velcro, and when you lift it up, like the Creality unit, has some extra Velcro to hold it out of the way. There's three cable access points on the inside, and filament access on each side of the printer, with five across the back for multi-material, an extra one on top, and this twin covered opening for tall bits of the printer to protrude through. Also on top is an extra access port, as well as the built-in thermometer. The panels on this are a lot more rigid, so it holds its shape without a frame. It also comes with these rubber stoppers to plug the filament feeds you're not using and stop heat escaping. Side by side, we can see the Creality box is a fair bit larger, despite being the smaller of the two versions that they offer. I didn't have a lot of room, so getting the printer inside the Creality box was a little tricky. I found I had to rotate the open front downwards to swallow up the printer, then reach inside, put the printer the right way, before connecting all of the cables. It's hard to see what you're doing, but as you can see there's room for the filament inside and the cables are fairly well concealed, including the power cable for my custom temperature measuring apparatus in the front left corner. Apart from unloading filament in advance, the Wham Bam enclosure is a lot easier to install. You simply put it over the top. It's not designed to use the original filament holder, so you'll need an external one. I borrowed mine from the Prusa Mini. It has a not bad filament path inside, and the cable management is really easy too for the power cable. So, on to printing with the enclosures in place. Heated passively, which means only the heat that's already generated by the 3D printer, and it did make a big difference. Here are the standard enclosureless temperatures, and here's the graph with the enclosure in place. As you can see, they steadily rose throughout the print. For the Mark III inside the Wham Bam, it was pretty similar. The Mark III generating enough heat to hold the internal temperature at around 40 degrees, and the electronics enclosure topping out at a little under 45. So what was the effect on printing? Well, the Mark III seemed to get on as usual, but the Ender III performed worse than stock with the part continuously delaminating. The final piece for the Mark III inside the Wham Bam still had some warping on the edges, but not enough for it to fall off. As you can see for the Ender 3, I had to try over and over and was unable to get one single print to finish completely. They all had significant warping and lifted off the bed. So if the passive heat from the printers wasn't making a big difference, what about if we used a hair dryer to artificially heat the chamber before the print? For my active heating tests, I used the hair dryer to raise the interior temperature to just over 50 degrees Celsius at the start of the print. On the Ender 3 and the Creality box, if we compare the passive heating to the active heating, we can see that the temps start much higher but they end up drifting down by the end of the print to exactly the same levels they were at before. Despite this extra heat at the start, the print still curled up and fell off. Worst of all, the print quality had deteriorated significantly since the initial prints, with these ripples the whole way along the surfaces. At first I thought it was the electronics overheating, but then I noticed the belt for X had lost tension thanks to a PLA part warping in the heat. For the Mark III inside the Wham Bam enclosure, it was a pretty similar story, with internal temperatures starting around 50 degrees, but converging back to the same levels they were with the passive heating. Like with the Ender 3, print quality seemed unaffected by the extra heat at the start. The Ender 3 might have been out of action, but I still hadn't tested the combination of Creality Box over the Mark 3. And with this I had my first failure on the Mark 3. In fact not a single print finished successfully inside the Creality Box. Perhaps it's cursed or something to do with the filament being stored on the inside. 
I did still measure the temps up until when I stopped the print and they were almost identical to the Wham Bam enclosure. In fact, if we overlay them, we can see that we're going to converge in exactly the same way. There's an equilibrium between how much heat can be generated by the printer versus how much can be retained by either enclosure. I did use the hairdryer to repeat the active heat test, but once again inside the Creality enclosure, the print failed on the Mark III. I took the enclosure off and managed to print a test piece successfully just to show that there was nothing wrong with the printer. I asked the question at the start of the video, is this type of thing even safe for your 3D printer? As we saw with my Ender 3, any PLA printed parts on the printer will likely warp and possibly fail. With all of the printer parts hotter and expanded, it was also harder to get my first layer correct. And this is harder still when you can no longer get your head down close to properly see the first layer and you're also stuck looking through a distorted plastic window. It seems pretty obvious, but your stepper motors will also get quite hot. On the Mark III, they were getting pretty toasty to the touch, but on the end of three, they were too hot to hold my fingers on, and that will definitely reduce their lifespan. The printer's main board will also get a lot hotter. As we've seen in this video, it's going to be several degrees higher than whatever the chamber temperature is. On the Mark III, this actually caused the LCD to stop working, and the only way I could fix it was to reboot the printer. I wasn't going to stick any probes inside the power supply, but obviously that's going to run a great deal hotter as well. And if that component fails, you could have some serious trouble on your hands. Now it's worth noting that all of this was done with internal temperatures of only 50 degrees. And for me, this wasn't anywhere near hot enough to stop the parts from warping. In fact, on my Ender 5, I have active heating from two PTC heaters, which are able to hold the internal temperature at just under 70 degrees. And even at that temperature, ABS parts still warp, peel up and fail. So clearly it's not efficient enough, but I did get some things right on the Ender 5 that are worth looking at. Any printed parts are from ABS, so they don't warp and fail. And those that are PLA are well away from the heater and covered in insulation to protect them. All of the electronics are kept separate to the main chamber, including the power supply, which is under the left hand side. And I have two inlet fans and two exhaust fans taking cool air from outside of the heated chamber. Furthermore, all of the stepper motors are still located outside of the heated chamber. That means that no matter how hot the heated chamber gets, I know the electronics will be cool on the inside. If you wanted to recreate this type of setup on the Mark III, you're in luck. There's a detailed article on Prusa's blog that talks about how to build this IKEA lac-based enclosure that separates the power supply as well as the electronics. If you wanted to do it on an Ender 3, you're going to have to do it manually, but fortunately there's designs like this on Thingiverse that will at least help you separate the electronics and make it compatible with the pop-up enclosures as seen in this video. So that's my results, but what about yours? I've read some good things in community groups about people having success with these type of enclosures, so please leave your experiences in the comments below. If I had to pick between the two, I'd go for the Wham Bam due to its convenience. I also like the fact that it collapses down quickly and easily, so when I'm not using it, it's easily stored and I'm not wasting a lot of space on an enormous box. As for the end of five, now that the linear rails are fitted, I'm going to refine that design. You can expect to see that in a future video. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.